David, what's your take on this? December still going to see a hike? I think it's very likely we see a, a hike in December, but um, you know, clearly today's data definitely make it a little bit more of an interesting discussion. Weaker wages and definitely a miss on the headline. But um, you know, next year's really the, uh, the the meat and potatoes of the fixed income market, and I guess it's also the meat and potatoes of how we discount future earnings on the equity side. And as you were just showing in your chart, the market's gotten itself almost to the point where it's pricing out uh, pricing out almost all of the rate hikes for next year. I think that's a, a pretty uh, a pretty significant message to the Fed. And if I had to characterize the last two or three months of trading, I'd say that it was really characterized by terrible communication by the Fed about what its plans are and what it's seeing in the economy. I think the uh, equity markets are riled up about that. So you think that all of this volatility, this like a wild bull that's in the middle of a rodeo is just because somebody doesn't know how to communicate clearly what's happening? No. I, I think that started it back on October 3rd, and I think that the fact that they didn't come out and kind of correct that message about being a long way from neutral really let the market go into a somewhat untethered place, and now they're trying to rein it back in. But, you know, I mean, look, at the end of the day, what, we're you know, adjusted for dividends, total returns on the S&P are unchanged on the year. It's not the end of the world, but it is down yeah. about 10% from the highs. I think. You just had, you have, you have a lot of other factors. You guys have been talking trade and everything else. But the real factor for me that really sent us spinning from October, November, and even, you know, these wild swings that we're getting today, I think are just people trying to figure out what the message is from the Fed. I think they did a pretty poor job for the last two or three months, and they really got to fix it. Hopefully December will get some sort of strong statements that they really are on the sidelines, and they really do want to pause. The inflation data suggests they should. Every piece of inflation data, wage and, and, and price, is telling you that they're about to miss their target and they are missing their target in core PCE. David, what's your expectation for whether other big international central banks will also delay any expected tightening that they were planning to embark on next year? I ask, obviously, uh, for you to then give us your view on the US dollar, which is having a big impact on equity markets. Absolutely, you think the dollar is. I think when it comes to the big one, the ECB, which I think is what you're referring to, uh, they notoriously are pretty uh, slow to change. So if anything, the odds of a mistake there of kind of staying the course and staying too tight into something that looks like a slowdown would be uh, par for the course with the ECB. I think they did tighten in the middle of 2008. So history is not on your side in getting the ECB to recognize that things have changed. I'm not predicting that that's what's happening. But I don't think, I think it's going to be harder to get the ECB to, to change course. I do think other central yeah. banks, Bank of Japan, emerging market central banks, some of the other commodity currency central banks um, will, will probably be much more likely to, to sort of look at the U.S. and take a cue from that. Okay, a little bit more than six minutes before the markets close down right now, 520 points on the Dow Jones Industrials. You think trade and inflation are the two biggest macro issues that we should be paying attention to. What did news today tell you on the jobs report, uh, on the president's tweet and the Huawei uh, procedures in Canada? What are you learning on those two issues that might inform how you do business next week and how you advise your, uh, your company and your clients? Well, that, that's right, Contessa. I do think it's trade and inflation, and I think trade is, is just super hard because we're, we're sort of fighting these tweets. My, my basic storyline to clients this year on trade has been don't expect that Donald Trump wants to have a full-scale trade war. Expect that it's an art-of-the-deal style negotiation, so some crazy stuff's going to happen, and he's going to sit Pete Navarro at the table just to scare off his opponents. And what he's really looking to do is create a fairer trade environment and move to a more cooperative solution, not one where everybody's defecting in a kind of prisoner's dilemma game. So I, that's still my long-term view. I think that's where we're headed. I think the more the market sends him a message that the trade stuff is a problem, the more Trump is going to back away. But that's, you know, we'll see how that goes. We've had a, a kind of message today, I think. So uh, we'll see if we get some compromise. It's, uh, it's early days on trade, but I, again, I just don't see that full-scale trade war. Yeah. On the inflation side, I think the evidence is amazing, not to mention that we have a near 30% fall in oil prices in the last couple months or a little bit more, which is going to feed through to a lot of headline uh, negativity for some of these month-on-month -month numbers. So you've got the core PC running at 1.8% on a three-month annualized basis at 1.2%. I think inflation break-evens are all trading at the lows of the year in terms of inflation expectations. And the University of Michigan data came out today, long-term inflation expectations back down to 2.4%, which I think is pretty much 
just a few tenths below their all-time lows. So it's, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting times for inflation, especially when everybody panicked this year about inflation being such a big deal and the Fed mm -hmm. possibly being behind the curve. That was back in February.